Alhamdulillah, I'm sure you have achieved a lot. I see a lot of growth in the school as well, it seems, because obviously the, the, the numbers are much greater, and we thank Allah for this. Uh, I want to ask a few questions to you, my beloved children, something extremely important, and that is, if you have, if you have a video game, if you have a video game, and you have uh, a game of football out there, which one do you prefer? Okay, okay, we can, we, let me tell you what I prefer. Okay, okay, all right, that's fine. Uh, I would prefer a football game out there because I am actually mixing with real people, someone I can talk to, I can interact, and so on. So for me, it's much better to play a game where I mix with people. I'm not a fan of football, but I would prefer it to a video game. Although the video games seem to be much more interesting, but I'm going to be on a phone, and if something happens, I, I, I can't do anything. But if I mix with a person, I can at least have an interaction with another human being, and there is ajr, and there is a reward in that. Did you hear what I said? So if I play with a friend of mine as a little child, it's better for me as a Muslim to be playing with another person and to be giving them light in their life than for me to just sit closed on a little phone and keep on tapping the screen. We tap the screen, isn't it? Nowadays you get these car games uh, where you can drive whatever vehicle you want and when you win the race, you can get another vehicle. You can open the lock, am I right? You can open the lock. I don't think it's Lightning McQueen. It's something much uh, faster than Lightning McQueen. And at the same time, uh, if, when that happens, you become a person who doesn't like to talk to others. You don't like to mix and interact. So what would happen? When someone is talking, your mind would be somewhere else in totality. You wouldn't even be listening. And this is something dangerous. It's not good. You know when your parents tell you, if your name is Muhammad, Muhammad, come here. And you haven't heard a thing, nothing. You didn't hear a thing. And the minute they say, there's chocolates here, suddenly you heard everything and you were there for the chocolates, mashallah. You were there for the chocolates. Allahu Akbar. You know, in Qatar, I prefer not to eat chocolates. Guess why? Can anyone guess why? Yes. Yes, in the blue there, mashallah. Yes, with the glasses, Habibi. Uh, no, my reason is a little bit different, not the calories and so on. It's because it melts in the weather. It just melts. The other time I brought chocolates when I came here, even this time I brought, I brought quite a few chocolates with me, and they all melted and they all like, you know, uh, soft chocolates that you don't even enjoy. By the time you open them, your hand is eating more than your mouth. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgive us. So uh, the truth is, here in this beautiful country, it's important also for us to mix with one another, to talk to people. And when you talk to someone, you see, when I'm with, with a phone, and when I'm with my video games, I'm using the word phone, but whether it's an iPod or, or whatever else it is that you use, a little computer game, the, the what do they call them, uh, Playstations and so on, uh, all that is, if I were with it or on it, I wouldn't really be fighting. You know, I wouldn't be fighting with someone. Uh, but when I'm playing a, a game with people, guess what happens? Sometimes you end up fighting. Am I right? Sometimes you disagree, and sometimes... A person scores a goal and, and you want to tell them they were offside and they say we were not offside and then it causes a quarrel. That is so good. Do you know why? The quarrel is not good, but the fact that you are now going to solve the problem is what is really, really good. It's healthy for your mind. It's healthy for you. As, a, as, as you're growing up, if I, uh, if I had a difference with someone, if I disagreed with someone, I'm trying to word it as easily as possible for you to understand. If I didn't like something you did, and I speak to you, and you speak to me, and then we talk to each other, uh, and, and we sorted the matter out, that is preparing you to become a good adult who can solve problems, and who can actually interact with someone and who understands. But if I did not mix with you, I never had a problem with you, because I never mixed with people. The day I need to mix with people, I will not know how to mix with them. I won't know how to talk to them. Today, when someone comes in, we say, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah. Do you say assalamu alaikum to your game, to your video game? 
You know, I don't want the children to think that if I say assalamu alaikum to my, to my game, that I, I might win the game. No, you won't. It doesn't. But this, uh, the reason I say this is interaction is very important. It's becoming less. You know, moms and dads also need this advice that it's more important to interact, subhanallah. It's more important to interact with human beings and to leave aside these things sometimes. Yes, there is good use of it. I know my children growing up, mashallah, and more and more of their work is on the iPad. Am I right? A lot of the work, the teacher will tell you to hand in something and drop box it. And the teacher will tell you to do this and to, to get to research on the computer and so on. When we were young, I don't even know. We did not even have access to computers in my time. You know, I'm a dinosaur. So at the same time, when you have work, you do it. You are allowed to play games. Nobody's saying no, but you need to limit it, the time. If I tell you play for 10 minutes, is that too little or is it right or is it too much? 10 minutes. You want to play for 10 minutes? Oh. Allahu Akbar. 10 minutes is really good. It's a lot of time. Okay, I got a new rule. Do you know what's the rule? However long you take for salah, that's how long you're going to be allowed to play games. Wow. So how long is your salah going to be? MashaAllah. One hour salah. Okay, that solves another problem. MashaAllah. Okay, Alhamdulillah. Okay, let's listen to this. Okay, let's listen to this. MashaAllah. Let's listen to this. Alhamdulillah. Okay, we can make another offer. However long you take for salah, we will offer you double the time for your game. Wow, I think that's a good rule. It's a rule in my house. So subhanallah, it's nice. And if you get up for fajr, you're allowed three times. Three times the amount of time it took. Three times. Okay, so inshallah, bottom line is we will work hard and we will... You are allowed to enjoy. You are allowed to enjoy. But you must learn to interact and to mix. When I speak to young children, uh, I don't like to give them a lecture. Stand up and say, oh, you need to do this and you need to do talk to them let them answer you let them you know liven up the discussion because it's the interaction that means more than anything else for me if I were to talk to you it's a nice thing isn't it would you like what's your name what's your name yes yes don't worry it's you with the red shirt and the glasses looking at me right here what's your name Habibi I'm sorry Khafi wow mashallah mashallah that's a nice name I haven't heard it before alhamdulillah it's unique just as well I asked you, because I learned a new name. One day, inshallah, someone asks me, you know, can you help us with names? I'm going to give your name. Is it okay? You know, when kids are born, sometimes the parents come and say, can you please help us with a few names? Normally, I like to say, uh, you must choose your own names, because my taste might not be the right taste for you. But I can suggest them a few names. Can I give them your name? And tell them, you can keep your baby's name, this name. Is it okay? It's okay. Wow. It's not okay? It's okay. Okay, alhamdulillah. No, no, no. Don't worry. If they, don't worry. It's not going to hurt you if they keep your name. My name is Ismail. So basically, a lot of people have my name. But I have somebody else's name. So it's still the same, you know. When I say somebody else, I mean it's come down. A good person, a Nabi of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Or a good person. And other people keep the same name. Alhamdulillah. So, uh, do you want me to carry on talking or is it okay? My, my time is up. But I don't know about you. Can I keep on talking? What do you want me to say? What should I talk about? You don't know what I should talk about. Okay. Yes, what should I talk about? Islam. Wow, did you hear what he said? Talk about Islam. How many of us here are good Muslims? Put up your hand. Okay, put your hand down. So, can I ask you a question? Can I ask you a question? What is a good Muslim? But you just said you're a good Muslim. What is a good Muslim? What is a good Muslim? Sorry, st st stand up. I want to hear you. Okay, very good. Now let me help you. Okay. A good Muslim is one who listens to what Allah has to say. Subhanahu wa ta'ala. A good Muslim is one, he said, one who prays. That's correct. So we all said we're good Muslims, right? Do we really pray on time? Come on, come on. Okay, inshallah we will. We will, okay? A good Muslim is one who prays, one who does not lie, one who does not steal, one who does not cheat, one who does not disobey parents, one who listens in the classroom, one who's not unruly, uh, one who tries to be a very good person, and guess what? One who likes to mix with other Muslimin. That's a good Muslim. One who likes to mix with other Muslimin. You know why? Because if you are a good Muslim, you will come to the masjid for salah. 
And it's, it's necessary for you to come to the masjid. And that's only made necessary because it's important to mix with other Muslims. If it was not important to mix with other Muslims, Salatul Jama'ah, the Jama'ah we make in the masjid would not be important at all. It would not even be given any importance. But because it's so important to mix and to interact and to help, that is the reason why Salatul Jama'ah is extremely, extremely important. Now let me tell you, you know what? When there are poor people and people who don't have what you have, then to help them is something good. So sometimes you find a poor person and you give him one riyal. Is it something good or bad? It's very good. So how would you know that someone is in need if you did not mix with people? You wouldn't know. So this is why we need to mix and we need to make sure that when we say I'm a good Muslim, you need to understand what is a good Muslim. So inshallah, uh, the next time I come and I will ask a question, inshallah, by the will of Allah, if Allah gives me the life, you know, to be here again, you will be a little bit older, a little bit older, inshallah. So I will ask you a question uh, about what a good Muslim is and you can give me the whole detail that I've given you and even more, inshallah. You will read about it, you will ask your teachers, Everything you learn about in this madrasa is being a good Muslim and being a really good Muslim, improving and helping yourself uh, and helping others. So uh, I want to ask you one last question. I want to ask you one last question. Uh, and that is, how many of you know the meaning of Surah Al-Fatiha? MashaAllah. Okay. Now the reason I'm asking you, you can put your hands down, mashallah, mashallah, mashallah. The reason I'm asking you, the next time I come, I want to see more hands up, inshallah. You do? You do? Inshallah, next time it will be fully, isn't it? Okay. The reason I'm asking you, I asked you how many of you know the meaning of Surah Al-Fatiha. And quite a few of you put up your hand. Next time we want to see more hands. And I'm going to ask you about the other short surahs as well. And then I will ask one person to come up and to say it out, inshallah. Who, who, who is ready to do that now? Surah Al-Fatiha, the meaning of it. Who can stand up, come here to the front, stand next to me and, and read the meaning of Surah Al-Fatiha in English. Say the English of it. Who can do that for me? Okay, the guys are shy, isn't it? Are you shy? You can? Surah Al-Fatiha, the meaning of it? Come. The whole of Surah Al-Fatiha. Bismillah ar-Rahman rahim Stand here. Amin. Mashallah. And in English? Amin. Next time. Okay, inshallah. <laughs> no, that was a good attempt. I, I'm so impressed because at least he came up, alhamdulillah, and he tried. Maybe he didn't understand exactly what we asked, but alhamdulillah, next time we'll know the English as well. The reason I say this, wallahi, in order to know whether you're a good Muslim or not, you need to know what Allah said. I said moments ago, a good Muslim is one who listens to the command of Allah. The command of Allah is in the Quran. It starts off with Surah Al-Fatiha. So I want to encourage you to learn the meaning, inshallah. Next time I come, we're going to know the meaning of Surah Al-Fatiha. Am I right? Next time we come, we're going to know the meanings of even a few more surahs. So I will leave that, inshallah, for the next time. Inshallah, we're going to see development and growth by the will of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. What would you like to say? Inshallah, what we're going to do next time, we, we're going to ask you to read the meaning of another surah, one of the short surahs, inshallah. You can choose which surah it is by the will of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So my children, I, my, my time is up. I have another commitment and I need to go, inshallah. Uh, I hope and I pray that uh, the few moments I spent with you, I enjoyed them. I always enjoy speaking to children because I interact with them. And uh, it's something that helps me a lot. So I hope and pray that the next time I come here, we're going to have, uh, inshallah, a little bit more by the will of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Jazakumullah khair. Yes, brother. What's your name? You are? MashaAllah, Tabarakallah. You can sit down now. Whoa. Okay, um, Alhamdulillah, MashaAllah, well done, well done. Jazakallah khair. Just a minute, I, I want to spend one minute, just one minute, giving a point of encouragement, inshallah, to, 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 to the volunteering teachers and the teachers who are here. 
Uh, I also teach uh, similarly and I volunteer. So it's on an on and off basis. It's not on a full time basis at the moment. Uh, I, I said something the last time if I'm not mistaken, but maybe I might repeat it to share it with the rest. You know, something always comes to my mind when I think of teaching and teaching Islamic studies. Something very powerful comes to my mind. You know, a lot of us are volunteers. We volunteer. We want to teach. Uh, after the Battle of Badr, after the Battle of Badr, there were captives, those who were taken captive by the Muslimin. And one of the means of them achieving their freedom, and you know the kuffar, for them, uh, for them, this worldly life is a paradise. They do as they please. It's a jannah. So they were told, look, you are captive, and if you would like to achieve your freedom, which is more or less your paradise, you need to teach 10 of our children or our people how to read and write. I'm sure you've come across this. So 10 learn how to read and write, and then you can go. That's what they were taught. That's what they were told. And some of them did it, and some of them actually went. They were freed after that. So the point I want to raise is very powerful, and that is these people were teaching... These were non-Muslims teaching something that was not Islamic studies. It was how to read and write to Muslims, 10 of them, just 10, and then you can walk free. You can have your paradise. So don't you think that with us, we are teaching Islamic studies and we are going to teach, inshallah, more than 10 people. Don't you think that Allah will grant us our paradise by his mercy as a result? And because of that, and I firmly believe that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows what's happening. It's not easy to teach children. It's becoming more and more difficult. You take a look at, for example, you know, the, the unruliness as time passes, as advanced as we're becoming, even the adults are unruly today. I, I was sitting and watching the House of Commons in the UK at one stage, and I saw big MPs and the way they operate and laugh and joke and clap hands, and, and, and you won't believe this is actually a parliament. Allahu Akbar. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us an understanding. Obviously, it's their way of doing things, and I'm not saying it's right or wrong, but it's surprising to us to see something that we wouldn't ever imagine and believe was, you know, uh, the, the conduct of people who are supposed to be legislators. So, getting back to my point, and that is, subhanallah, if a person teaches the deen, they will achieve so much by the will of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, maybe that will be their entry into paradise. If those people were granted their own paradise because of 10 people with us, inshallah, it will continue and continue. And this is why the hadith even speaks about how the continuation known as sadaqa jariya, you know, that charity which is continuing is connected to ilmun nafi'ah. You know, a person who's left behind knowledge, yuntafa'u bih. That knowledge which is going to be, which is beneficial and others have benefited from, inshallah, they will be able to achieve a full reward of that and of all those who have benefited thereafter. Someone who taught me will get a reward for the person I taught. You see, because they taught me. So inshallah, have, uh, have hope inshallah and, and uh, keep it up. And there will be obstacles in your path. Don't run away because of obstacles. Because that's a challenge. If we were taught to run away because of obstacles in our path, none of us would be on the path. Because everyone's had obstacles. And Allah says, well, We're indeed going to test you. May Allah make it easy for us all. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless you all. Jazakumullah khair. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.